Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 2 of Direwolf20's Super Circuit Maker Mod Spotlight. Today, we're going to look at some of the more advanced stuff you can do with Super Circuit Maker. Uh, first episode, which I'm kind of relying on you guys to have seen, shows you the basics of how to interact with Super Circuit Maker. And we're going to be building on those skills to make sure that you guys have everything you need to know to be able to play with this awesome mod. So today's episode is going to cover some more advanced topics. Uh, we're going to look at analog cables so you can actually have analog signals here and how they translate to the analog signals in world. We're also going to look at uh, vertical circuits which are also three-dimensional circuits that use bundled sticks, redstone impregnated sticks, and these tiny plates. Then we're also going to uh, be talking about the inventory scanner, the block update detector, and then finally we'll probably touch on circuits within circuits. It's Circuitception right here on Super Circuit Maker. So before we start on some of the stuff here, I want to touch on two little things that we missed mentioning last episode. Things that I didn't know existed until Amadornis reviewed it and said, hey, you forgot about this. Blueprints, and the same can be applied to red plants, can be cleared by shift double right clicking. Neat. Also, we've got the Glowstone Exciter, which I didn't totally understand how this worked, so I waited until this spotlight to show you guys. Uh, the Glowstone Exciter will go ahead, and we'll see here in a moment how it works, will randomly decide uh, whether or not a redstone signal triggers an outputting redstone signal. So it's a randomizer. Basically, uh, it has a chance whenever it receives a redstone signal to output one. Cool. It should also be noted that um, the signal actually turns on or off the glowstone exciter based on the signal going in. So if it stops receiving a signal after it's on, it stays on. And then the next pulses have a random chance of turning it on or off. There you go. So the next item I'd like to show you guys is the inventory scanner. The inventory scanner can read how many items are in a chest in much the same way that a comparator can. So when we throw a bunch of items in there, we'll start seeing a small amount of redstone power emitting from the other side. Sweet. Now we're about to get into the analog system. And when we get there, you're going to quickly learn that the analog system in Super Circuit Maker is a little different than the analog system in Vanilla Redstone. Vanilla Redstone has a minimum of zero and a maximum of 15 signal strength. Meaning that if you place a lever or a redstone torch, you'll get the max power of 15. Uh, Super Circuit Maker is a little bit different. Its max power is 255. And we're going to be talking about how we can work with that in just a little bit. But long story short, yeah, we should see what we're talking about. So that signal strength is 204. That equates to a power of 12 in vanilla Minecraft terms. Let's talk about how we can actually utilize this now. Before we get to that, I should note that this inventory scanner inherits pretty much all the properties of comparators. So any other mods that use comparator type stuff, for example, the runic altar from Batania, where it emits a signal strength based on the status of the altar, uh, same thing will work. So this inventory scanner works pretty much exactly like a compar comparator. So now that we've briefly touched on the inventory scanner, let's talk about the analog system in Super Circuit Maker, which, as we just learned, is not 0 to 15 like in vanilla Minecraft. Let's go ahead and just set up a basic wire system here, and we can see how things go. So if we were to put a lever on the outside here, we would see with our multimeter that this is a signal power length of 255. Note that it's not losing power as it progresses down the circuit board. So unlike vanilla redstone, it does not lose power. You'll also note that it automatically converts from the super circuit maker system, which is 0 to 255, into the Minecraft system, which is 0 to 15. Um, this is actually pretty simple math. Grab a calculator if you don't believe me, but 255 divided by 17 is 15. So simply take whatever your um, level is here and divide by 17, and you'll get the in-world redstone power. So that's pretty cool. But let's take a look at what we can do with this. Specifically, we can do some functions. So let's take a look first at the subtractor because that's easiest to demonstrate. Now, when you rotate this guy, you'll notice that there's a little line. That's the line that should line up with the larger of the two numbers when you're subtracting. Unlike addition, where 10 plus 5 is the same as 5 plus 10, subtraction, it matters, right? 10 minus 5 is a totally different number than 5 minus 10. So the number that's going to be the larger, the, the left-hand side of the equation, if you will, is where you want to put this guy, okay? Yoink. So that feeds into the subtractor. Uh, now, the other thing you might want to throw in there, if you don't want to subtract from another incoming signal, might be a constant. 
These guys are pretty easy to make, by the way. All these uh, panels, the adder is made like so. And then you simply place um, the adder in a window by itself and you get the subtractor. Subtractor turns into multiplier and multiplier turns into divider. And then any of these with a redstone torch gives you a constant. So the constant, you can specify exactly the signal strength to output. So in this case, we'll be 200, right? Now, you'll also notice that the constant is always automatically outputting because feeding a redstone signal into a constant doesn't really make sense. So if we take a look at our multimeter here, we should see power level 200 and power level 255. So what do you think this is going to be? Well, let's see. Ta-da! It is outputting something, and it is a signal strength of 55. Now, time to grab a calculator again. 55 divided by 17 is 3.23. So if we round that, we get a redstone power of three. Neat. So if we change this to be 180, then we get 255 minus 180 equals 75, and that turns out to be a redstone power strength of four. Obviously, 255 is the limit. So if you do 255 plus 180, you're gonna wind up with 255. So clearly this allows for a higher level of fidelity when you're messing around with the adder, subtractor, multiplier, and divider. So having 255 strength is uh, pretty cool. And then you can see obviously that'll switch to the 15 level strength if you need. Now as a note, um, Amadornis is also working on red alloy wire. Currently a work in progress, but once it's in, it will support the zero to 255 strength as well in world. Next, we're gonna take a look at some of the cells that you can make if you use redstone impregnated sticks, which allow for a vertical building of your redstone uh, circuits, which can make for some really cool stuff. So let's, for the moment, take out the scenario of being able to use different bundled cables, okay? So what if we wanted to have a cell that was created like so, where these sides are inputs and these sides are outputs, okay? Seems pretty easy, right? We just apply a redstone signal on either side. Make sure that we set the outputs appropriately. And you'll notice it's doing what we would expect it to do. But what if I wanted this lever to control this output and I wanted this lever to control that output and that was it and we wanted them to be exclusive? Well, for that, we'd wanna create a null cell, which is actually pretty easy to create. Let's go ahead and make one now. Uh, first off, you're gonna to wanna to get yourself a redstone impregnated stick, okay? That goes right here. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that a tiny pile of redstone is sitting underneath it. So do that, cool. This allows that redstone signal to travel upwards. Neat. The next thing we're gonna need is a little tiny plate, okay? The tiny plate can go on top here to form a second layer. Now we can have a redstone dust up on the second layer. Cool. Then we can have a couple more tiny plates with some more redstone dust and another piece of redstone dust underneath and a redstone impregnated stick. Cool. Uh, now, when we flip our lever, the redstone signal travels across the line. It goes up one tier and then it goes across here. We can go back to having our dust in the middle here and we can disconnect these guys. And all of a sudden, we've got a null cell. Cool. So notice now that this side exclusively controls the left and the back here exclusively controls the front. There's no uh, interaction. So what happens is, again, the redstone signal travels up one level, it's carried across and brought down, and this is known as a null cell. And if you get yourself the blueprint for a null cell, well, then you'll pretty quickly figure out that I made something very similar to it. Clear paste null cell. Yep, that looks about the same. And of course, there's a bundled stick variant as well. So if you're using bundled cabling, you can use the bundled stick to bring your bundled cable data up to the top. So if we were to pop this guy here, there you go. And you can see as we zoom in that that bundled cable is sitting right there, and then we can run bundled cabling across. And we'll swap this out with a bundled stick as well. We'll remove these guys. Place a bundled stick here. And let's say that we wanted to dye this blue. Fair enough. That looks pretty good to me. And our bundled cable should carry the data across. Nice. 
We've already got one tier of verticality here. If we go up another one and another one and another one, you can see there's a total of four tiers that can go above the base plate for a combined total of one, two, three, four, five levels up. So you can work your way up pretty high and you can transmit all kinds of redstone signals in three dimensions. That's extremely powerful if you're really good with redstone. It should be noted that uh, redstone torches can transmit their signal to the block above them just like they do in vanilla Minecraft. But also note that redstone torches are two of these micro blocks in height. So instead of just one level up, it's two levels up for a redstone torch. So to demonstrate how to place this, I'll remove all these pieces and show you that you'll want to place down your dust, followed by one, two sticks, followed by a plate, followed by another piece of dust. And now the torch is transmitting its signal to the blocks above it. However, maybe you don't want that to happen. For that, you can use the non-conductive tiny plate. If we place this here, now that signal will not go into the block space above it. Cool. So non-conductive tiny plate blocks the redstone signal from going above, whereas the normal tiny plate allows it. It should also be noted that if you right click these non-conductive tiny plates, they change their pattern. What's the difference here? Well, let's demonstrate. With a normal conductive plate, a redstone signal can travel across this wire down and out. It can also travel across this wire up and over. Neat. With the non-conductive tiny plate, we can adjust that. By default, when you place it, no signal transmission is allowed. However, if we want to change this, simply right click. Now, the signal will not travel down. But it will travel up. If we want to change it again, we right click it again. Now the signal will travel down, but not up. So you can adjust it so that the non-conductive tiny plate manipulates what direction the signal is allowed to travel. Not at all, just up or just down. And with the regular tiny plate, it'll travel both up and down. Pretty cool. And just in case you missed this nuance in the first series, uh, you can also do this horizontally. So this is an example of doing it vertically, where you can adjust that it can only go in one direction. This is a way to do it horizontally. Simply shift right click on a wire connector. Cool. Now watch what happens. When I flip this lever, this wire going in can only feed into this direction. It can't feed in the opposite direction. Pretty cool. So you can imagine there's a lot of complex stuff you can do by being able to control what direction redstone's allowed to flow, and be it up or down, or horizontally left or right. Something I want to note, by the way, about the palette and brush that I forgot to mention in episode one, when you place it, it defaults to this gray color. So actually all redstone that you're placing on the board is colored in one way or another. Uh, and simply by choosing the palette and brush here, I believe it's light gray, yeah. So you can see there's dark gray, but then there's also light gray. So that's the default color is light gray when you place it without a brush. Ready for some circuitception? Here's the end gate I made earlier. Remember this guy? Both signals need to be on for the output to be on. As long as both on output is on, you can actually pick this up and place it on a board. Neat. And we've got a little circuit sitting on our circuit. Just make sure to set this piece to the read setting, and then this and this equals that. But it has to be both. Super cool. Now I've made this big bundled mess that doesn't actually do anything. It's a circuit that does nothing. But there's a reason that I made it, and I want to show you. Um, remember at the end we mentioned of the last segment that when we used this guy it showed a circuit complexity, and I would tell you what that's all about. Each object that you place on a tile 
adds to the complexity level of the circuit as a whole. Most circuits that you build will probably be less than one. Um, and different items have different complexity levels and they will eventually be on the tooltips. But for now, just keep in mind that simple items like redstone probably have lower complexity than ender pulsar. And we can demonstrate that by simply getting this. Right now, the complexity is 0.25. So by itself, there's no real complexity. It's just really simple. This adds a very small amount. And an ender pulsar, adds a little bit more, okay? As your complexity grows, it's not gonna affect you unless you're doing circuits on circuits. A complex circuit would be one that's greater than one. That's a little bit complex. And the deal is that when you pick up that complex circuit and you place it on an existing circuit, you'll notice it takes up a three by three tile space. As opposed to picking up uh, that guy and uh, let's say a complexity one circuit, or less than one that is, is a one by one tile space. So complexity one or less is a one by one tile space. Complexity one through four will be a three by three tile space, right? Or two by two, yeah, that's two by two. And then um, I'm not gonna make one because it would be really long, but uh, 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 just to keep in mind that a four through nine complexity will take up a three by three space, okay? so. Low complexity, medium complexity, and not shown is high complexity. So that's four through nine will be uh, the higher space. Circuits also have the ability to handle the bundled cable and the coloring of cables in two different ways, which adds for some serious complexity. Uh, let's take a look. So notice that there's two sides that you can input the orange and white or orange and white over here, right? So let's say that we wanted to make it so that when you're feeding in orange or white cable, it activates, or when you're feeding in any color, it can activate on the output here, right? Let's give it a shot. So um, by shift right clicking to hide the cable, you'll notice that you get these little icons on the side that you can right click to change between bundled mode and bundled plus redstone mode, okay? I'm gonna set these guys to bundled only mode, I'm gonna set these guys to bundled plus redstone mode, okay? This side doesn't actually have anything connected, so this one doesn't matter. But this back one, what's gonna happen is in bundled plus redstone mode, if any color wire with an active signal goes into this side, it's gonna activate both the orange and the white wire. In bundled only mode, only an orange or a white wire or a bundled cable with orange and white wire active would activate the white or orange wires respectively, okay? So let's pick this guy up and give it a shot. I'm gonna place this down and I'm gonna get some more of uh, my fancy little glowstone dust and I wanna make sure that this is on here. So remember, uh, the way this was configured, if we rotate him, was like so, okay? So you're only gonna output bundled cabling colors. Cool? All right, so that should be good. So let's put bundled cable on the bottom. That's going to feed into orange and white. And in the top, it doesn't matter what color, so we're just gonna do light gray. And we'll throw a torch in there just to make this simulation work. Cool. I like it. Any color, because it's set to redstone plus bundled, will pass through the signal, okay? Now the side that's bundled only will not work that way. So if we do this with our torch, notice how it's not turning on orange or white. However, if we place a white thing down and set it to import, it's activating white. And if we set the orange one down and set it to import, it'll activate orange, or it should, uh, but this feature is in dev and it's a little bit buggy. But trust me, that orange should have activated and um, it will probably in the version you guys get. I'm using a beta in dev version. We should also be able to feed in bundled cable here. And uh, if we set white with a torch, That should work. Awesome. And uh, let's say if we set orange on the torch, that should work as well. But again, looks like the orange one just, there might be something wrong with the circuit too. I might've derped up that circuit a little bit. Maybe there's something funky with it. 
But you get the gist, right? So when you lock your circuits, if it's bundled only mode, it'll only accept the appropriate colors. If it's bundled plus redstone mode, it doesn't matter what color goes in there. It'll activate all the wires. So if we did like gray. So that's a nuance of circuitry, uh, but those of you who like to build complex circuits will love this feature. Do you guys know what a block update detector is or a bud switch? Uh, it's something you can do with vanilla redstone. I haven't used it all that much personally, but uh, I know a lot of vanilla redstoners do it. So you can trigger when there's a block update nearby. Pretty nifty little device. Uh, so for example, when you harvest wheat, it emits a quick pulse of redstone signal. Uh, this is added in Super Circuit Maker. I believe 1.11 of Minecraft is adding a block like this too. Uh, so this is something you can use to uh, integrate with your circuits pretty well. One more thing I'd like to mention is uh, if you build a circuit that misbehaves in some way, it might crash. And instead of crashing your game, the circuit itself will crash and be contained and it'll turn blue and it'll be called the blue crash of death or the blue circuit of death. It'll basically crash. Um, so BCOD is a thing that can happen and it just basically prevents your game from crashing by just crashing the circuit. If you shift right click on it with a multimeter, it will give you a link that you can send to Amadornis so that he can investigate why the crash happened and uh, try and fix it. Because it's usually something wrong with the mod, right? Like some combination of complexity that you did in the circuit caused it to crash. So he wants to review it. So if you do happen to get like a, a tile that turns blue and says it crashed, and it's like an upside down frowny face like or something like that, then that means that you did something funky and it caught the crash. So shift right click with the multimeter, it'll give you a link, much the same way that the SCM export feature does, and you can forward it and use that to give a bug report to Amadornis for uh, his bug reporting. So one of the very difficult parts of this mod spotlight is showing you all the stuff you can do with it, because it's like any other mod, uh, some more complex than others, but Here's an example. There's a million things you can do with this. One really good example, which I'm showing you in Soren's base right now, is to control uh, all the circuitry involved in the endogenic generator. Remember the complex redstone and timings that you needed for that thing? Well, here we go. You can see there's a whole bunch of really cool complex uh, wiring using Super Circuit Maker. And he's got obviously a multi-block circuit going on here with some really complex timings to output redstone signals to his endogenic generators, triggering them to run. Pretty cool. Not bad at all. Here's an example circuit right now that he must have been testing with. It's a sequencer, it looks like. Pretty neat. When the redstone signal pulses, it outputs. Pretty cool. Lots and lots of applications, as you can see here. And this is Soren's room of circuits. As you can see, there are several circuits available, um, some of them more complex than others. Here we've got a really tall circuit working its way up bunch of different ones. That one looks like a knot gate, aka a knot gate. Uh, you can see some complex, some simple. That's the beauty of Sur Super Circuit Maker. You can make some really simple things if you're not great with redstone, but once you start playing with it, you'll have a lot of fun and come up with complex things like that. Pretty sure that's a comparator, by the way. And those of you who've watched my uh, Forgecraft series know that I recently built a flower for the Nandalifian in Batania, and Soren took the awesome circuitry that I made and made it into his own. So it's a little bit harder for me to understand because he has some circuits on circuits here. He's got several circuits on circuits and he's got a few different things going on. But if you'd like to see more, definitely check out that series uh, when I did the Dandelifian flower on my Forgecraft series. You'll see some more with Super Circuit Maker and applicable tasks for it. So for now, Darwell 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed checking out the mod spotlight for Super Circuit Maker. There's some really cool and interesting stuff you can do with it. Very fascinating. Um, if you're good with redstone, you can do some really neat stuff. If you're not so good with redstone, you should learn because Super Circuit Maker is a lot of fun to play with. All right, for now, Daryl20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the spotlight. Take it easy.